It's time for story time. It's time for story time. Hey ho the merry o, it's time for story time. Welcome to story time with Mrs. Mary. I'm happy to be with you today. Since you can't come to the library, I thought I would read some stories from my house to your house. So the first story that I want to read today is called Finn McCool, The Giant of Knockmany Hill, and it's by Tommy DePaulo. You probably know Tommy DePaulo from other books like Streganona. Let's find out what happens to Finn McCool. In olden times, when Ireland's glens and woods were still filled with fairies and leprechauns, giants, too, lived on the fair Emerald Isle. One of the finest of those big folk was Finn McCool, who was wed to the lovely great lass Unan. They made their home on the top of Knockmany Hill. Now, as any good giant, Finn McCool had work to do. As he was often away from home, lovely Unag didn't seem to mind, for there was plenty to keep her own hands busy, spinning, knitting, and even giving a pretty touch to the giant's house. Life was very pleasant indeed. One morning, when Finn McCool was busy working with his kin, Building a causeway to Scotland, the word came that Colcullen was coming. Let's find out who Colcullen is. Colcullen was a giant too, and without a doubt, the strongest in that part of the world. When he walked, the very earth trembled, and with one blow, his fist could flatten a thunderbolt. He was so proud of that feat that he kept the thunderbolt right in his pocket to show all just how strong he was. Every giant in Ireland had been given a good beating by Cullen. Every giant, that is, except Finn McCool. And Cullen swore by the green that he would never rest, day or night, winter or summer, until he added Finn McCool to the list. So far, Finn had been smart enough. He kept moving about whenever he heard that Cullen was in the neighborhood. But this time, Cullen was sure to get him. So Finn left the causeway and sped off for Knockmany Hill, his house and his darling Unog. Finn, my love, said Unog, greeting him at the door. What brings you home so early from your work? The chance to get the sight of you, said Finn. My sweet thing, since he was as honest as the summer day is long, he added, and to keep out of the way from Cullen, he's after me. Unog soothed her husband her, she brought him slippers, lit a pipe for him. She stirred up the peat fire so it would be cozy. And then she set down a huge mug of stout and a giant slab of soda bread for her dearie. Finn, husband of mine, enough is enough, said Unag as gently as she could. For years, you've been hiking around from one place to another to avoid Cullen. Why, you even built a house high on this windy hill so you'd be able to spy him coming. You'll not get a moment's rest until you stand fast and face him. I, I'll be getting plenty of rest if I stand fast and he knocks me down. I don't have the heart to face a man who can make a young earthquake just with his walk and who carries around a flattened thunderbolt right in his pocket to prove how strong he is. And that cock many hill gave a little dance. He's coming, said Finn, his face turning a fine shade of pale green. Now hush, said Unag, and give me a moment to think. Don't you worry, I won't do 
I will do all I can to help you settle this matter once and for all. Unag then worked a charm the fairies had taught her. She took nine woolen threads, each a different color, and braided them into three braids. She put one around her right arm, one circling her heart, and the third around her right ankle. Now nothing she did could fail. Next, she sent around to all the neighbors to borrow one and twenty iron frying pans, and she hid them, one and twenty loaves of bread that she baked on the fire in the usual way. She set them in the cupboard with some bread she had baked the day before. She then took a pot of milk and made it into a fresh wet cheese and put that along with some stones at the foot of the cradle she made up. Now, my darling, she said, handing her husband some baby clothes, put these on and do everything just as I'm about to tell you. Look how finny, funny he looks in those clothes. And remember, she said at last, Cullen's strength lies in his brass finger he has on his right hand. Now, quick, into the cradle, because I hear that man mountain at the door. All right, woman, bellowed the giant at the door. Where's that coward Finn McCool that I've been chasing after all this time? Well, well, said Unag with her usual sweet smile. Now, isn't that a shame? Finn was off working on the causeway when some important family affair called him away. But he'll be home by tea time. So why don't you just come right in and sit down? There was Finn in the cradle, and he was trembling. See this, Kulkullen said, pulling what looked like a pancake out of his pocket. This was my thunderbolt until, a thunderbolt, until I caught it and flattened it. And that's what I'm going to do to Finn McCool, too, said Unag. That may not be as easy as you think. Finn McCool's a big broth of a man. Why, take a look at our little baby, and you might be getting an idea of the strength and bread of himself, Finn. Colin peeked in the cradle. Cheer up, said the huge baby looking at him. My, said Colin, what a big boy. While you're waiting, why not have a bite to eat, said Unag. She put some loaves of bread on the table along with a can and two of butter and a pile of cabbages. Cucullin, who was as much a glutton as he was a bully, popped a loaf in his mouth and took a huge bite right down on one of the frying pans. Clang! Yo, said Cucullin, what kind of a devil's bread is this? Here are two of my teeth out. That's Finn's bread, the only kind he eats, says Unag. It's a bit too tough for you. Too tough for me, shouted Kulkullen. I should say not. Just give me another. Kulkullen chopped on another loaf of bread and into it another frying pan. I'll not have a tooth left in my mouth, woman. There's two more out, Kulkullen hollered even louder. The baby began to holler too. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Ah, sweet dumpling, said Unag, and she handed the baby, Finn, a loaf. And because there was no frying pan in it, Finn ate it right down. More, said the baby, and he gobbled up another loaf. He seems a strong lad, said Kulkullen, getting his a little worried. If this was the baby, father must indeed be a bit stronger than Kulkullen thought. Ah, yes, said Unag, beaming. Why, instead of dollies, he loves to play with those little white stones there in the cradle. Show the nice man, baby dear. Finn did as he was told. He picked up a stone that was really the cheese and squeezed all the water out of it and popped it into his mouth and ate it down. Cucullin was not to be outdone by the baby. He grabbed a stone and squeezed and squeezed and squeezed with all his might. He couldn't get one drop of water out of it. He popped it into his mouth, and with a chomp, there went the rest of his teeth. The howl that came out of him almost broke all the windows. When he finally calmed down, Kukulin said to Unag, 
What kind of teeth does this lad have? There must be made of iron. Let me see your chompers, baby. Ah, that. Baby Finn opened his wide mouth and Colcullen stuck in his brass finger, the very brass finger that was the secret of his strength. With a strong bite, Finn McCool bit the brass finger right off. Then up Finn leapt and began to pound the daylights out of poor Colcullen. That was that. Out the door went Colcullen, never to bother anyone, let alone Finn McCool again. Tea's ready, me love, said Unan, and Finn McCool sat down with the best giant wife in the whole world, and they lived a long, happy life. I think that was a good story for the day after St. Patrick's Day. How about we sing a little song? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're ready to have some fun, clap your hands. If you're ready to have some fun, clap your hands. If you're ready to have some fun, then join in everyone. If you're ready to have some fun, clap your hands. Great! I hope you enjoyed that. Do we have time for another one? It's 11.36. Okay, so now we're going to go on to our next book. It's a much shorter one, but I want to share it with you called No Matter What by Debbie Gliori. Small was feeling grim and grumpy. Good grief, said Large. What is the matter? I'm grim and grumpy, said Little Small, and I don't think you love me at all. Oh, Small, said Large, grumpy or not, I'll always love you no matter what. If I were a grumpy grizzly bear, would you still love me? Would you still care? Of course, said Large, bear or not, I'd always love you no matter what, just like your parents. But if I turned into a squishy bug, would you still love me and give me a hug? Of course, said Large, bug or not, I'd always love you, no matter what. No matter what, said Small with a smile. What if I were a crocodile? I'd still hold you close and snug and tight and tug, tuck you up in bed each night. But does love wear out? Does it break or bend? Could you fix it or patch it? Does it mend? With time together and a smile and a kiss, love can be mended with things like this. If you're sitting with someone else, give them a kiss. But what about when you're far away? Does your love go too or does it stay? Look up at the stars. They're far, far away, but their light reaches us at the end of the day. It's like that with love. We may be close, we may be far, but our love still surrounds us wherever we are. Take this time while you're home to enjoy being with your family. I know it's hard to be closed up, but do something together. Maybe read another story later. Spend time having a fun day. We're gonna sing our closing song now. You may know it, and if you do, join us. Um, it goes like this. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. I've enjoyed spending this time with you. From my house to your house, 
I look forward to our next story time with Mrs. Mary. Bye for now.